In 1997, you cleared UPSC, and a few years ago, you went on to write your book, Man Me Hai Vishwas, which has inspired and motivated our generation tremendously. The youth today have a lot of role models. They look up to them and get motivated or encouraged by them. So, what encouraged or motivated you to join the Indian Police Service back then? So, in 1997, uh, I was selected in five years to UPS and I was selected as Deputy Collector and Sales Tax Officer to MDS. So in the same year I grabbed three years. and we were three friends from my village and adjoining village uh, who could grab the exam together. Me got selected into IPS, my cousin, brother, Anand Patil got into IAS and Sugan the Chaugle, my classmate, he got into IAS. So this was a kind of a strategic plan success because when we were in 12, that point of time we heard the Bhushan Gagarani sir's speech and we stood third uh, in all India right? and uh, uh, he adopted Marathi media for his main examination as well as for his personality. So that gave us a, a kind of recognition that this exam, which uh, is a national level exam and uh, through which 27 different civil services uh, opportunities are there, in which IAS, IPS, IFS, IRS, and all the top level uh, bureaucratic uh, positions can be acquired. So that motivated us. And of course, uh, uh, you uh, said about my book, I have written two books actually. The first book is Manne Hai Vishwas, that is my journey from a rural boy to IPS. That is the journey of 23 years. Uh, and uh, second book is Gar Har Medan, in which I have written how the training of IPS molded me into an officer. So actually I was getting a lot of requests, me and my uh, colleagues. I mean, we attended so many functions in schools and colleges. We tried to give information about civil services, which was very new and something uh, different for rural youth. So, for awareness and education, uh, we traveled a lot. And uh, uh, due to this interaction, I think it uh, played a positive role. Little bit uh, in uh, uh, rural Maharashtra students to achieve success in civil services. So, you were previously the Commissioner of Police for Nashik City. Then, after being transferred to Mumbai, you now serve as the Joint CP for Law and Order. Over the years, you have been through tough situations. Could you tell us about a time you faced a moral dilemma? What was the situation and how did you go about it? In the police department, there are like daily challenges and daily struggles and dilemmas we face uh, at many instances. Uh, now being in charge of law and order, daily we have to face uh, different kind of mocha, agitations, the agitations maybe of farmers, students, weaker sections of the society. So that point of time, if the mob gets out of control, as per law, I have to use the force and control them. So that kind of dilemma is always there. Uh, there are many situations uh, where uh, the conscience plays important role. Uh, Blink is a book uh, which one should read as next uh, The decision should be taken immediately uh, after observing, observing the situation. So one such morcha was uh, there in uh, Chapel, wherein 15,000 people came on the road, they torched 30 buses, they attacked the police stations. Uh, my officers and constables were seriously injured. At that point of time, I reached to the spot with uh, one sub inspector and 20 constables. And uh, I was IG of the entire night. But as I was camping in Pune, I had to rush to the spot in hardly 45 minutes when this law situation was becoming turmoil. 
and that point of time I thought 15,000 violent mob is there and I was a bit knowing the pulse of the mob because I was an SP there, I was working as IT. So I thought if I go with 20 constable, one sub inspector and myself, use force, 50,000 force may attack on us. In our island, there would be kind of a serious massacre kind of a situation. So instead of that, I, I took a decision, I put down my helmet, I removed my weapon and I decided to go to the mob alone. So on a scooty, I went alone in that mob. I was not wearing high cap also because I was a bit known to them because I have worked in rural area. So youth knows me a lot because I interact with them, I try to motivate them. And when I reached to the spot, that whole mob, violent mob, I went on one scooty, one civilian took me to the spot. I was only one man in uniform in took me to the mob. That point of time, when they uh, saw a IG-9 officer coming to them without any weapon, without any lucky, they sat down. And then I gave a speech, which is on YouTube also. And in that 10 minute speech, I could calm them down. I told them that this is the serious, you are youngsters, your future is at stake. And if you take law and order in your hand, then you will face serious consequences. Instead of that, there are other ways which are peaceful. And uh, we can go together by that peaceful means to redress the differences. So certain situations are there uh, when, when you think of the duty first. Like 2611 also, me, my bodyguard, we reached at Taj at 9.51, they were at 9.40, but without waiting for a minute or backup or bulletproof jackets or automatic weapons because the people were being killed. Me and my bodyguard entered into Taj and uh, we could give good retaliation to them. As you said, we do encourage the youth um, in a very good life, in a very good which always works. But my question is, how do you manage to keep yourself calm in such high stress situations? As you just gave an example of a note job, it would have stressed you to a terrible second as well. So, what do you do to, keep, to ensure that you are calm in such situations? So, how is that going to be? So, there are like two different things that physical courage and moral courage. Uh, that was explained in a beautiful way by one general. But uh, physical courage is responding to the situation. Moral courage is saying yes or no. So uh, that raw courage comes with a lot of conscience and uh, trust in yourself. So uh, basically if you know yourself and uh, there is a beautiful uh, saying uh, in fact, that is a book from the book called The Art of War by Sun Tzu. So, if you know yourself and if you know your enemy, you need not worry about the result of funded battles, you are going to win in every battle. If you know yourself and if you do not know your enemy, you will uh, get one victory and one failure. And if you neither know yourself nor your enemy, you will suffer defeat in every other battle. So here, that I am not saying that mob or that Murcha was my enemy, but that was like adversary. And where I was knowing the pulse, knowing them, and knowing yourself, that confidence makes a lot of uh, difference. Makes sense. Uh, sir, uh, what do you think is the biggest enemy that is law enforcement challenge that you face in our country? I think uh, still. Uh, we are into that uh, caste, community, religion, parochial, all kinds of linguistic, that kind of differences are there and uh, that differences are still there and there are certain uh, elements which ignite such kind of betrayal. And that time uh, we face that uh, communal situations at many instances. I think that is the major challenge as far as law and order is concerned. There are different challenges like luxurism, terrorism, etc. I'm not talking about those. From law and order angle, that uh, brotherhood uh, 
communal harmony is very important and we are trying our best as law enforcement agency. But uh, it's the job of everyone. Awareness and education comes before enforcement. So our prime job is enforcement. So uh, media, uh, political representatives, other parts of bureaucracy, public, NGOs, and even can play a very important role in calming down uh, all these hatreds, uh, all these volatile situations. Yes, sir. Uh, we learn sociology in school and we read about caste and all these things. Our students, I feel that since we are learning it since such an early childhood, it might change and we might go back to how we before partition we did that how we used to live together uh, without any disabilities. So let's hope we do get there uh, in some way. So before partition also there were so many differences. <laughs> anyway, we will not talk about that. Uh, in your opinion, so, what is the most challenging aspect of policing in this jurisdiction? Most challenging uh, aspect as far as jurisdiction uh, uh, policing is concerned, I think we have to make it more proactive. Preventive measures are being more. Prevention is better than ever. So, in every aspect of policing, like we deal with body crime, we deal with property crime, we deal with economic crime, we deal with cyber crime. So prevention, we should focus on prevention more than the remedial measures, which are definitely there. Uh, we have to investigate, we have to detect the cases, we should punish the people. But uh, I think we should focus more uh, on the use of technology in prevention of crime. Like we have CCTV cameras in the city. So 5,500 CCTV cameras, the government has installed across the city. Next phase is that the 6,000 cameras are being installed. But one single order 144 which we issued in last December to uh, mandate the private establishments like malls, multiplexes, the jewelry shops, the schools, colleges, industrial houses. We mandated them to put the CCTV cameras on the periphery. They should put which can look towards the road, towards the periphery, towards the junction. So we could install 50,000 cameras with not a, a sing, I mean, not a single rupee of government. It's public participation. So, involving public is very important, and that that will uh, bring transparency. That will um, force us to become open system, positive system, and many constructive changes can be done in uh, that way. So, major challenge is to make police smart. Smart S stands for strict and sensitive. M for modern and mobile, A for alert and attentive, R for responsive and responsible, and T for trained and technocentric. So, training is also one of the very important aspects. Yes, I think I recently have to meet the government because of the public participation and also the government as well. The faith of the public is shaken by the recent disclosement of corruption cases. What are your opinions on the same and how do you think we can curb corruption cases in civil service? As you rightly say, in the PCG, uh, PCGT uh, always aims for that is the public participation. Every civilian is a policeman without uniform and every policeman is civilian with uniform. That maxim should spread that trusted deficit we can curb by bringing police and public uh, together. So, uh, police always fake uh, this is flat. Uh, there is a quote outside in the country policemen is denounced by the public, ridiculed by the police, deleted by the newspapers, unsupported by the prosecuting officers and judges. They are shunned by the respectives. They are exposed to countless temptations. They are condemned when they execute the law and dismiss when they do not. And they are supposed to play the role of doctor, lawyer, educator, soldier, diplomat with the remuneration less than our per day wages laborer. So this quote explains everything, their uh, salary, their living conditions, uh, their job profile. So unfortunately one bad case 
brings this trust to visit, like this end cases uh, you, you are referring to that brought up a lot of law to us but you forget that 120 officers and constables sacrificed their lives during Covid times by battling on the whole police station was infected all 130 people were infected in Sahar police station so they are giving sacrifice also but nobody can justify corruption but this bringing transparency, use of technology is very important if we make the paperless governance we schedule the deadlines we uh, bring uh, transparency in every working condition that will definitely bring down the What do you think is the role of youth in governance? The role of youth is very very important you are the makers and uh, you are the change makers in fact you have to think about the change there is a beautiful saying or I think it is a prayer God grant me the serenity to accept the things which I cannot change courage to change the things which I can and wisdom to know the difference so you are the change makers so you should come with certain ideas you should be vocal about your rights you should be well aware about your legal uh, all kinds legal, legal literacy is very important you, you, you are on Instagram you are on, but there are like internet is full of knowledge so you should educate them safety and security of senior citizens, women, children, people from weaker sections, people from minorities, youth can come together, form NGOs, make their voice, the system should listen to their voice and what, what they want. If the youth decides that nobody can write it now, it's your future, it's your future and it's country's future. The youth is represents represents country's future. So your voice is very important and you should be vocal in, in schools, colleges, you should be active and uh, you should get to know about uh, the political system very well. Because uh, we know about technology, we know about IT, we know about computers, everything, but we don't know about our system, how the political system works. And that pressure, that support and pressure, you can play the role of pressure. If you find something wrong, pressure can be put up. And if you find something positive, constructive, then you can support that. That dual role of support system and pressure system, the youth organization should put up. And that's my opinion. Sir, if you could give a piece of advice to the youth who are determined for a change, what would it be? I get inspired by one poem which I always narrate. That is a poem of Brahman. I think that that should be the message for the youth to dream the impossible dream, to fight the unbeatable hope, to try when your arms are too weary, to love the pure and chase from afar, to reach that unreachable star. This is my quest to follow that star, no matter how the place, no matter how far. Fight for the light. Without questions, without cause, to be willing to march into the head for heavenly cause. So, working for the cause, not for applause, and fight without questions, without cause. That that would be like my advice. This poem and personality, which uh, should be the message to me. Thank you.